Last year, Citroen made a big splash in India with the launch of the C5 Air Cross. Now, that was a luxurious car and it underlined all the strengths of the brand with comfort and simplicity. Its next car is arguably its polar opposite. It's a hatchback, more massy, designed in India, made for India, manufactured in India. Of course, I'm talking about this, the C3. And Siddharth has already covered a lot about this car, about its unique looks, its two different powertrains and driving dynamics. This tech check, well, it's all about the tech. So let's hop in and see what Citroen has in store for us. The C3 has two engine types and there will be two trims but both engine variants will get the same features. The car has a rather simple interior that is punctuated by two screens, a 10-inch infotainment display and a digital instrument cluster for the driver. Other than that, there is not much tech here. No wireless charging, no reverse cameras, only sensors, no air purifier and no connected car tech. It is a lean car, but it is like that by design. I must admit, this 10-inch screen that Citroen has provided on the C3 could be one of the best in the segment. I dare say it's even better than the one on the new Baleno. Why? Firstly, it's bigger. It's 10 inches. Then, it's got this really nice matte finish, which does not attract a lot of smudges. And this user interface, it plays into Citroen's strengths. It's simple. It is too simple. It's got this tile-like format with huge touch points. So you tap here, you get in. It's very simple, very easy to use, even for the elderly who are not very used to with touch screens. That's a great thing. The only criticism that I may have of this display is the fact that these bezels are massive. They are massive bezels. And this piano finish may be there for aesthetic reasons, but in time, I'm pretty sure it will get scuffed up. Citroen also provides three USB ports overall, two for the back seat occupants that support fast charging and one in the front, which is also used to plug in your phone for wired smartphone connectivity. It can also be used for USB OTG purposes and it charges slowly. These are all USB type A ports, so not the new standard USB type C, which we see on modern smartphones. But when we come here to the virtual instrument cluster, you get a black and white display that displays you the speedometer, gives you information about the trip computer, the fuel figures, the coolant levels and the indicators and the various lights. But it's a very lean, set up out here because there's no tachometer, there's not a lot happening, the display is also very tiny. Looks pretty clear, but you know that it has been built to a cost. The main party piece, figuratively saying, is the presence of wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You don't believe me? Well, this is an iPhone out here and CarPlay is running wirelessly out here. And it is so sweet to have this in a car at its price point because in this segment apart from the nissan magnite no other car has this none of the tatas not the altros not the punch none of the maruti suzukis not even the hyundai's and that's a great feature it's a very convenient feature and it makes things so simple and easy to use and if you're using apple carplay for instance you can use siri wirelessly on Android Auto, you can use the Google Assistant, which is even more useful. So that is a great, great feature. But given that, a wireless charger would have been great to have. There's also a wire guide that basically keeps the console free from cluttered cables. A phone charging cable can be secured by this rather neatly. 
and if you are going to be blasting music on this car then of course it comes with a six speaker audio system four full range speakers in the doors and two tweeters like this one out here it's not something branded it's not a Bose JBL Harman Kardon it's plain old stock but then again on the C5 Aircross Citroen also had a stock audio system and that sounded pretty sweet and this one also sounds pretty good for its segment the mid-range is very good so if you're going to be listening to a lot of Bollywood music or music with a lot of vocals then it's going to really sound good it's going to cut through nicely the bass is weak sound is quite loud but things start getting muddy when you pump up the volume levels and it starts clipping a bit but the travel response is also quite decent so that means only when you play really complex music like really complex hard rock or something like industrial techno which has got a lot of soundscapes a lot of layers a lot of instrumentation that's when things get complicated otherwise it will do the job but if you're an audiophile anyways this is not going to satisfy you in fact no stock system is going to satisfy you you're going to be looking to amp it up and have some boston acoustic speakers out here the C3 is not meant to be a very premium or high-end offering. So while it may lack a bunch of features some other cars may get, it still covers enough and more to keep most entry-level buyers happy. The screen and smartphone connectivity will no doubt hold more appeal than connected car suites or gadgets like a purifier for buyers at this end of the market. To know how the car drives and how Citroen should be positioning it, Watch out our complete review here on our YouTube channel.